Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. I haven't done a Q&A in so long and we are well overdue. For those of you who don't know, I actually got married, how many weeks ago was it? Like three to five weeks ago. By the way, if I sound bunged up, can't breathe, all of you up, I've just had a cold. The post-wedding cold, hit but anyway i have my civil ceremony which kind of turned into its own mini wedding in september i'll explain but we had a bigger ceremony in ibiza in october ibiza is obviously a spanish island in spain you actually can't get married there unless you are a spanish resident so we had to have a civil in the uk it had its pros and cons but that is what we chose to do it was actually meant to be a very chill civil in a registry office for those of you that don't know i'll give a really quick backstory it very quickly turned into us hiring out a section of a pub which was one of my like locals growing up and they're actually registered with Brighton and Hove Council which is where we got married in Sussex to have legal weddings so it kind of just worked really really nicely they were also dog friendly so a little shrimp and my mum's dog my mum and her dog are very rarely separated so they got to be there and then a friend actually lived across the road so they then weren't with us for the party but they were with us throughout dinner like sat under the table it's very it's very cute and just a really nice day and it made it easy in terms of logistics like everyone just turned up to one place we didn't have to move in between it was very very nice i got ready at the grand in brighton before and i like stayed there the night before and then ryan stayed there the night after if you want like the vlogs are there the vlogs are <laughs> I vlogged as much as is physically possible throughout our wedding era so those vlogs are there if you want to go and watch them and like get the actual backstory but I wanted to do a little Q&A on the wedding situation and just answer any questions because I have been getting a lot of questions like DMs here and there and just on TikTok and stuff and I thought it would be easier if I just sat down and like answered a lot of like the real highly repeated questions so we've got like dress questions logistical dress questions which i can't wait to talk about ring questions venue questions so i'm just gonna breeze through them all i'm gonna try and get through this as fast as it's physically possible but i've already been talking for three minutes so let's just see how we go so there's a lot of dress questions from how did you know it was the one to how did you choose half penny and it's kind of funny because i was actually very open to the kind of dress i had i just wanted to try absolutely everything on i wasn't really fussy on it being like high end low end i i really didn't i just wanted to try on loads of dresses i wear a lot of really nice dresses for work when people say did you know it was the one it's kind of funny because i've it's not the first time i've put on a very large dress so i didn't kind of have that wow moment like i loved my dress but you know some people have a really strong emotional reaction to their wedding dress i didn't have like tears or anything like that but yeah i started off the process by just going into more local stores kind of like lower end because i was like if i just find what i want from here and i want to go with this then i'll just do that i like i'm really not fussy on whether it is from a big brand or just something smaller i was open to if i couldn't find what i wanted having something custom made i know friends of mine that have done that especially in brighton i feel like you can find a few like independent people that dress make I know one of my friends who isn't an influencer she did that because she wanted something like backless long sleeve specific cut on the chest so i was just really open to whatever and i'd actually tried on a dress which i loved and then i saw someone else wearing it who is in the public eye and my heart was slightly broken because what i just never really wanted was like direct comparison because it's just a natural thing that people do and they'll be like, who wore this better? Like line of photos up. I'm not talking about in magazines or anything like that. I'm just talking about like the online chat. I just, I didn't really, I wanted something that I at least hadn't seen someone else wear so, so close to my wedding. Cause I knew I was getting married within the year. I started planning it as soon as we got engaged. We got engaged. I can't remember what date in September, but I think we were literally almost a year to the day or just under to our legal wedding so it was quite quick and there were other dresses that I tried on and loved and I'd seen someone wear like two years before but it didn't really it wasn't it wasn't as close so my heart was kind of broken over this dress in particular but I was just like I'm just gonna try everything on I had so many appointments both local to home and then London appointments and I went into half penny and was just I had a lot of appointments that week booked in with different like brands in London so I was just kind of like taking 
seen them all as they came. I didn't really have my heart set on a specific brand. I knew I loved Halfpenny. I loved how you can mix and match all of the pieces. I'd seen other people have their wedding dresses done by Kate and they were just so stunning. And I really did love the customizable element, even in pieces that weren't necessarily bespoke. There are dresses, like there's one that I think retails on Netaporter and you can like wrap it in different ways. I think it's the one that Vic actually wore as her bridesmaid's dress. Even something that is fully ready to wear from them is like customizable. And then obviously being able to pull a certain type of top and then a certain skirt and pair the two together and it makes a unique combination. I thought that was really special. That was something that actually made my dress way more special because no one's had the combination that I have had before and that was so so fun. But yeah I tried on, it was the first dress I tried on, it was just we were mucking about. I looked at this combo in particular. It was a very very girly top like off shoulder which was not something that I thought that I wanted. Very very floral and then the skirt was like a peplum, which I have to say, I personally love. My whole family, like the older members of my family, I know they hated this skirt. It's a very Marmite item, but I think we're gonna see a lot more peplums coming out over the next couple of years. So this combo, I actually love the combo of my corset top that I wore and this skirt, and I could have alternated that on the day, but we felt like that would be a bit confusing and a bit too many switch ups. But yeah, I had this peplum skirt on, which was, huge and that remained my underskirt for my wedding dress so I actually had one two three four four pieces and there were so many different like variants of dress that I could have made with all of those pieces it was actually quite wild and the skirt was my Everest in terms of obviously getting it to Ibiza <laughs> but we made it the half penny team were just incredible in terms of like helping me out in that situation but anyway I'm in this different kind of corset top and skirt and then I turn around and I see this it's kind of like a thinner skirt it's not a big puffy skirt but I was like what is this because it looked like the skirt of the dress that I tried on and really loved from just like a local shop down here and then since someone else wear it was that same skirt but I felt like it was slightly better because it was basically both of them had the skirt was made up of rose shapes and the other one was more like light and feathery it, you had to really look to see the rose shapes it looked more like feathers from afar whereas the half penny one was like more obvious rose shapes and i loved that i just thought it was so beautiful and so special whilst i was already in one combo i was like what is that and they said it's like it's this skirt you can either wear it just on its own and it just falls kind of like very a-line I guess like just falls kind of straight and it's really beautiful it's stunning in that way like even if they had not let me on the plane with my giant underskirt the corset overskirt and veil sleeves combo would have still been stunning so they put this overskirt on over the top of me and I think by this point I was also in a different corset that had no off shoulder I just thought it was the most special dress and I thought it was so fun and I really loved it and I had Amelia and Victoria and Rosie there they were all taking photos and they sent me the photos after and I just kept flicking back to this one photo like we tried on so many stunning dresses that I could have been so happy with. I obviously was so happy with one of the others that I chose it for my UK civil wedding but this one I just kept coming back to and I actually then tried on another dress the next day at a different appointment that had like that same kind of like ruffly vibe and I was like I love this kind of like textural ruffle. This is so special. This is something that is so not necessarily something you would think of when you think of me but I keep gravitating towards this in particular I just love this texture even after all of the appointments I had after I kept just coming back to this one half penny dress and I was like oh my god I'm obsessed I am actually obsessed I couldn't stop thinking about it I took my mum in I think a week later and she also loved it and then I also showed my mum the more timeless little slinky Cirque dress that Halfpenny also did and I just had loved that so much. I loved the open back, I loved how it looked around like my bum, it just kind of went in in all of these lovely places but skimmed where it needed to skim, it was just stunning. And I don't always love having my arms out so I did love the idea of the longer sleeve dress for my UK civil. Sods law it was actually 21 degrees, I was expecting it to be like raining. I was fully ready for like the worst weather and it was 
up until the point where I left the hotel and then it was like sunny and 21 degrees and it was wild. But yeah, we had this gorgeous Cirque dress that I'd also tried on as well. And Kate added a bow to the back because I loved how dramatic, like this is one of the things that Halfpenny is so amazing at as a brand is their mix of separates, but also their ability to combine something so simple with something so dramatic, but it all works so seamlessly together. And that was one of the reasons why I loved Halfpenny before I even walked in the door, when I was looking at all of the kind of different vibes that they do. I loved that mix of like very simple and very dramatic all in one, which I think my UK dress really reflects very, very perfectly as a very classic kind of half penny like simple but dramatic kind of style their veils in there are just incredible as well so i did have a veil for my uk civil which was just super simple and classic i felt like it really suited the venue and at this point i knew both of my venues so i knew what i was working with and what i would look like in the setting and i would really recommend picking your venue before you pick your dress because i think that's that was such a integral part of the dress choosing for me was being able to i'm quite a visual person and i liked visualizing these pieces in the location I just knew that I wanted like there was so much space I know an Ibiza wedding is normally more beaded and slinky and Spanish vibes and I do love that but I just also felt like the venue had quite a lot of space and I wasn't going to be inviting hundreds of people so I was like I can take up some space this dress that I'm obsessed with this dress will be fine then when I was in with my mum showing my mum the dress Kate then also suggested the addition of the veil sleeves just to take up some more space and make it even more fun and dramatic and I just loved it and I loved how ethereal it looked and it was just the mo it was the most fun. I wear a lot of very special dresses, I've worn couture before, I knew that I was go going to struggle in finding something really really special for my wedding and it was so hard because I always thought that I would want something very simple and like that the classic satin and it just felt quite flat on me at times. I was like I want to I want to bring some drama and I just don't think a classic plain satin is going to work in this instance so I loved that dress my mum loved that dress all my friends loved that dress it was so pretty it was a proper princess dress but in a very special unique way that I've just not really seen before and that was really fun it was definitely a lot girlier than I ever thought I would go for but I loved with the corset how undone it was like you could, you could still see the boning you could still see through it it made it a little bit more sexy which was so nice because obviously you have the sleeves and you have the skirt and it all together could feel a bit much but that kind of like undoneness of it I felt like just worked so perfectly but then the addition of the flowers allowed the sleeves to kind of pair into it really really well so beautiful I actually have a lot of footage so I will insert some of the footage from like our journey in here <gasps> oh, my god. oh my god I'm screaming wow seriously so we could add stones, crystals, messages into that embroidery around Aww. there with those flowers. We could put things on the flowers. Like you could do any of that kind of magical customizing when you're working. Amazing. Oh wow, look at that bodice. So we can increase those flowers, like I said. I love it. Oh my god, it's amazing. Wait, turn around again. Oh my god. Oh wow, that's amazing. Ooh, you're gonna love this one, are you? Yeah, I am. So there's matching lace sleeves. Oh my god, fun sleeves! Organza. Oh my gosh. And we've got pockets as well. Oh, really? Oh, fun. Do you know what looks really nice then? Not having it on the shoulder. Oh, doing that. Yeah. That's cool. That's really fun. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. Oh, that looks really nice. Oh, that's really fun. What a great neckline. Oh. With the bow. I'm screaming for the bow. The bow. Please do the bow. I love and we got so fun. Oh we got oh fun. God. That's so cool. That is sick. <laughs> oh my God. That's so fun. This is insane. Oh my God. Party in the back. Party in the back. Go. Wow. Woo. Oh my God. So fun. It's lovely. <gasps> I love it from the front. So oh, I love bad. this. Yeah. Oh, I want this shape in a bridesmaid's dress. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's so nice. I absolutely love this one, Sue. Your bum looks unbelievable. <laughs> Kimmy K. Yeah. I really this love this one. one. You get the vibe and you tighten up those sleeves. Yeah. Imagine that all fitted. Oh, I love it. 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 Oh,
So this was my the original like vision I had for the English wedding. Yeah, whether it was like something that went across or I was like long sleeve. This is, this is my second favourite. <laughs> oh, whoa. I know you were saying you wanted a slim line, but I just thought, well, let's just do it. Oh yeah. my god! Rose, well, god my mum then. would love it. I <laughs> that can open it. As you. Oh, it is like royalty. Yeah, so nice. nice. No, and I think oh, we need to make it food for tiny bit. Yeah. This one's, yeah. Imagine you DJing in that. <laughs> oh I love gosh, it. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. If you drop the dress for me, yeah, I realise why you give us these. Yeah. From this orange face over here. Why do I kind of love the gloves with it? It's fine. Yeah. Longer on this one. Yeah. There we go, like that? Yeah, I think that's nice. Were we going to have the ruffle underneath? Did we... We didn't decide. If you're going to have the ruffle, then you don't want that so long. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's entirely up to you. I should have to look at that. The best part. So you can see, you can just see it through. So it's entirely up to you. Happy? Yeah. Okay. So, much. <laughs> so, oh my God, darling. so nice. I've never seen it as big. It's just heaven. <laughs> Do you like one in the middle? Or would you prefer it to come off to the side? I think I, yeah. I think the middle is nice. Yeah. Just a little bit, and then the other side. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I like that. And I feel like I want something on this top edge. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think that's all. And I'm gonna just take one onto the cup edge here. Yeah. This is what we're working from. This is my first fitting photo. Do you like it quite nude? Do you want more? Do you like having the bra loops visible? We can maybe make the back a bit busier. Yeah. yeah. I'm happy for that to have more, like, especially like the smaller ones, I think it's so lovely. Yeah. What was the story behind the flowers? Because they're really special, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so the Josephine flowers were an initiative actually made by my mum, Josephine, years ago, and she couldn't bear the fact that when we made the big Rihanna skirt, we'd got some massive circles of silk organza to make frills, and all of the triangles around the edges of these circles became waste. Yeah. And the middles, we then cut out a, a circle out of the middle of the circle to turn into a frill. And mum was like, give me all of those offcuts, I'm gonna think of something to do with them. And she always taught me to find beauty in the smallest of things, and these are That's so the initiative. Sweet. And when she passed away nearly three years ago, we never realized how many she made because we never quantified it. She'd just make it as, as joy, as, as kind of that coutureness, and each one is stitched with a French knot. So it is literally now the most, because there's the, every collection there's always the flower now, and it's just become this insane labour of love of, of kind of stitching every single one of these flowers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, some have a tiny pale pink in different collections, there might be a bead now, and then we've done them with blue, but they're layers and layers of silk or ganza, and then stitched together, and then, yeah, yeah In lace. different sizes. Exactly. Yeah. Not being wasteful, designing with a conscience, and yeah. always, yeah. That's so gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, what, we can keep going forever. <laughs> have to come stick with that. I think that's beautiful. <laughs> Let me just take a quick I've done it to the first bone on the outside of the cup, but I'm changing the position of the back. Oh, right. So you see that slight diagonal? That's really pretty. That should help it stop falling, but if okay. you then want to wear it off the shoulder, yeah. there's enough gathering, but it just collapses. Yeah, that is really pretty. Susie sleeves in the shop, Megan, don't know, you? We also don't have these. No, so. we made this up for you. Please name them after me, I beg. We are making some Susie sleeves. I'm actually going to have to just like bridal walk this, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's no normal walking. There's no normal walking. <laughs> Too big to normal walk. Yeah. yeah it's so long. Yeah, I think we take take that off. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that is. So we have added some tool here and here just to give a little bit more height. It's looking really pretty. So this will all be stitched in so that will be all blank space. We've had all of the flowers stitched on. Next time you see this it will be final final put on to double check the hem length and those beautiful tulle edges will yeah. be hand stitched in. Amazing. All the flowers will be secured. But anyway I loved working with the half penny team and I think half of the experience for me was getting to work with Kate. She is just the most special warm 
wonderful person and it was interesting because some of the other appointments I had I didn't love like the interactions with the staff you actually do spend so much time with your wedding dress shop whoever you choose to go with and to me it felt really important that I genuinely really loved the team that I was going in and going to be spending so much time with. They're just such a lovely team, so I loved working with them. They were so accommodating in terms of getting the dress to Ibiza. They did offer to ship it for me, but I was a bit worried about Ibiza Customs, I've heard, is not ideal. And then one day, when we were on the yacht trip in the summer with Victoria and Alex, I was talking about the issue of stressing about how I was going to get this dress on the plane and for BA it needed to be certain dimensions before they'd let me buy an extra seat and that was buying an extra seat apart from checking it in the hold which is risky was my only option it actually didn't fit the dimensions the skirt was way too big to fit the dimensions which I believe are like 140 by 40 by 40 or something like that and Alex just sat there and he was such a boy and he just said why don't you just vacuum seal it and I sat there and I thought, why don't I just vacuum seal it? So the Halfpenny team actually, they were like, hold on biz, we'll take care of this. They vacuum sealed it for me in like a long vacuum seal garment bag, which was incredible. And even on the day they were amazing at, cause it actually kind of went flatter when it was being vacuum sealed. But on the day when I was leaving, they helped me to like rejig it into like the rectangle shape that it needed to be in. Sod's law, BA actually changed our flight provider. We were no longer on a British Airways flight flying out. So the seat that we had actually bought for this dress didn't actually exist. However, we'd actually treated ourselves to business class seats for the world's shortest flight, but it's because I wanted the extra baggage allowance and all of the like little bits and it made it really easy calling the executive line to buy the seat for the dress. That is my tip. If you are just flying economy, I tried just calling the regular customer service and it kept like just being like you need to buy an extra seat online goodbye and that was like you can't do that <laughs> stupid stupid robot so calling the executive line you actually do get a much better level of customer service however did I have to call them six times to arrange this and check up on my payments and check if it was actually booked yes was I calling them the day before we left to confirm because I'd not had an email about this extra seat that I had bought Yes. Would I recommend the whole experience? Absolutely not. But apparently on short haul flights, they won't just like let you on with a big dress as standard anymore. Whereas it used to be that they'd find a space to hang it in. It was all fine. They do not do that anymore. It's a post COVID thing. Apparently you can Google it. I looked online and I spoke to an air hostess when I was flying out to Crete and it is basically up to the supervisor on the flight, which is a very big risk. So that is why I bought the extra seat because I'm not a risk. I'm not a risky girl. I don't like to take risks. I'm very risk averse. I've done a, I've done one of those stupid quizzes with my accountant. I am risk averse. Yeah, the getting the dress on the plane experience not ideal. And bearing in mind that was the seat that I bought was just for the skirt. In my little wheelie carry on, that was actually full of the overskirt and the veil and the corset. When I break it down to people, I'm like that is actually insane. But anyway, in terms of like getting everything all packed up. The Halfpenny team were incredible. I loved working with them so much. They also did the bridesmaid dresses, which were phenomenal. All bespoke, tailored to them, absolutely beautiful. Each of the girls got to choose their own style in different materials, which was just perfect. And they got to choose something that suited their shape the best, which was just always what I wanted. My biggest stress was trying to find something in a color that everyone was happy with, everyone with different skin tones, different bodies. I wouldn't want that for myself as a bridesmaid. I did not want that for them. So I actually chose black bridesmaid dresses because I was like everyone's gonna be so happy with this and they really really were when I floated the idea the girls were like yes there was not a moment to think they went for it we were doing black tie if the boys get to wear black why don't the girls get to wear black that was how I sold the idea to my husband anyway yeah so they did the bridesmaid dresses I think that is it for dress questions I will try and leave as much detail in the info box on all of the dresses and like the names of the dresses and the names of the pieces so if you do want to go and inquire with Halfpenny I will leave all of the details below okay lots and lots of questions on the wedding venue and if I would recommend it and my answer is I don't even need to think about it yes even in the run-up to the wedding I was like screaming about the venue I have loved this wedding venue from start to finish they were incredible my uk venue 
terrible absolutely terrible i feel like the lighting is kind of going a bit funny in here there's a window up there and i feel like it's kind of being a bit weird maybe that's better anyway i have loved this wedding venue from start to finish they were incredible so they are venue only there's no accommodation which i was really happy with because the wedding options that were like hotels that were able to do weddings they would often try and sell you a package and it did not work out cost effectively we would end up subsidizing a lot of the accommodation because we just knew that a lot of our guests would didn't want to pay the price of that accommodation so it was actually so much easier for everyone to just pick what accommodation they were happy with some people chose villas and they made a holiday out of it and stayed for longer and like it just allowed everyone a little bit more flexibility because there was like minimum night stays and it was extortionate the way it was working out and then we found elixir which was a venue only and because of that it made like their level of expertise is just wonderful and weddings is all that they are focusing on day in day out they know what they're doing their team is so well oiled it's not like a hotel that occasionally does a wedding they were phenomenal we actually had leah who is a wedding planner who works for the venue we hired her there's an extra service she does where she's more of like a an actual planner as opposed to just like a, an organizer and she was there on the day for us the team was so well oiled like we went through the day i never at any point was thinking what's happening next who's doing like not at any point it was almost like we were guided through the day without even knowing that we were being guided it was honestly incredible even like when it came to photos like my mum and dad love organization as well so this kept them very happy they went and like told them what the situation was and what the order was and everything that would be happening in like plenty of time like everyone just knew what was happening at every point but without feeling like they were being like rushed or pulled around it was just incredible especially to come from that off the back of our UK civil where I was the planner and even on the day I was the planner so I was constantly like checking in making sure Chris my photographer who was also one of my friends who I love so dearly he was he had what he needed had he had his food when is his time to leave but we hadn't done cake and first dance so we need to do that ASAP because Chris needs to leave on time and blah, blah. and Chris would have stayed until midnight if I had asked him to but I just wanted him to be at home safe in bed at a reasonable hour so I was doing a lot of timekeeping on the day which I didn't enjoy and on the flip side I didn't think about what the time was at all in our Ibiza wedding like I just enjoyed the day it just was seamless it was perfect it was gorgeous I'll leave all of the supplies that we use if you are an Elixir bride because I have so many of you in the question boxes that are like Elixir bride what would you recommend I'll leave all of the suppliers that we used in the info box for you guys so that you can just go and have a look through I would say like there's certain things that we didn't go for like I didn't go for a big fancy wedding car in Ibiza which is something that you can do I went for a seven seater because my dress was so big I say this because someone asked me what cars we chose and whether we had like a vintage or a whatever no I hired two seven seaters to make sure all of my girls could actually fit in the car and me whereas the boys just i booked them like a nice mercedes like normal like suv thingy and then we have one of those take us home as well separately to they do buses home for everyone which is so great but we had our own like little car home so that we could just have that moment together and i could just bung my dress in the boot and it was so easy and so nice but anyway i loved them as a wedding venue they were sensational the food's incredible the owner is a chef and she is phenomenal i love her i love her so much what beauty treatments did you do to prep for the wedding i had some botox in my forehead i also had jaw botox but that was for me grinding my teeth which it actually has i don't think i had enough because it hasn't stopped me grinding my teeth <laughs> that was it lots of people asking also what my tan was my tan was saint tropez express bronzing mousse as always like did it on the sunday before we left did it again on the thursday which you will have seen in the vlog i have my routine down i am happy with my routine i trust in the saint tropez i just wear it in the day so i never get a streak never get a mark i'm happy with it that's what i did what made you do your own wedding hair oh my wedding hair has ruffled some feathers i don't like it when other people do my hair it's really that simple it's very rare that i like it when someone else does my hair i also just didn't know i didn't have enough time in my wedding dress appointments to play around with different hairstyles and so i didn't really get a feel and obviously when it came home with me i couldn't unpack it because it was vacuum sealed and i didn't want to like get a finger print mark on it before the day or anything like that so I was scared to even take the corset top out so I didn't get the chance to actually even on the day I did my hair before I got into the dress I really didn't have a chance to actually figure out what hair I wanted and the only thing I knew was that with the addition like it was obviously a very puffy dress and then with the addition of the veil sleeves I could have if I'd have just gone for like no veil sleeves I probably would have had my hair down 
because it wasn't like a whole backless situation. I didn't need to, so for my UK civil, I had my hair in a bun because I had backless dress and I feel like the bun makes space for everyone to just see the back, which is so nice. This one, because it was just a, a corset top, I could have done hair down, but hair down and then also having the veil sleeves, there's so much going on and it would have been windy and then the hair and then the veil sleeves and it's just too much. Everyone keeps calling it a slick back, but it actually wasn't a slick back. I just have a small head and not, tons of hair it wasn't slicked back at all it was just a regular brushed back bun and then some wispy bits at the front just felt really timeless and easy and you know what it was a little bit breezy it wasn't windy but i have certain photos where like the girls you can see the girls are like mid adjusting their hair i didn't have to do that once all i had to do at one point was like take a little bit of my wispy hair out of my lip gloss that was it it allowed me to enjoy my day and not think about my hair and i'm so happy about that so if you feel like you want to do a bun and people are making you feel like it's not special enough do you know what i think people that can pull off a bun are very special people i'm just gonna put that out there so don't let people make you feel like buns not special oh another dress question which i don't think i actually specifically answered but how did you know your wedding dress was the one was it custom i feel like we will have addressed this in the footage that you've seen i'm pretty sure the skirts you can just have and my veil sleeves and then my corset were custom the corset came just as the corset and then all of the things were like stitched on and the same with the veil what did you splurge versus save on saved on my hair <laughs> I honestly can't think like so much of it was like a package with elixir the venue so much of it is done by the venue that i didn't really have to worry about like lots of different suppliers and finding cheaper ones i felt like they were quite reasonable as a venue anyway they were like the most reasonable venue on that island let me tell you that are uh, the place where we got engaged i think they quoted us like 100k to get married there and i was like <laughs> No, we decided not to go for a pianist because we had a few more guests RSVP at the last minute Some that we originally thought weren't going to be able to come so we decided to forego the pianist Splurged on the videography which obviously because of work for me I was quite passionate about having a really lovely wedding video and I also wanted personally I wanted all of the speeches recorded so definitely splurged there I didn't spend I spent the average amount on the photographer she was i think when you google the cost of like an average wedding photographer she came out as average but she is sensational someone actually asked i can't remember how they worded it but they did say is an expensive photographer worth it i don't know how to answer that question because i don't know what we're classing as expensive because i know i didn't go over average with my photographer but i know that what photographers cost on average lots of people class as expensive in the industry i work in i was like yeah that's normal. Like I am so used to hiring photographers that I kind of anticipated the rough cost of the photographer. As long as you like the photography, but I would say definitely don't just have like your mum with an iPhone. But yeah, Google is your friend. When I started wedding planning, I Googled the average cost of literally every type of supplier so that I knew whether I was being quoted over, over the odds. Did you stick to budget? It seems impossible. We definitely went over the ideal spend, especially because I we're both self-employed. So we, the money we have is the money we have. So we physically couldn't go over budget. If we were going over budget, there would be no more money. Like physically, we couldn't spend any more. But I had an ideal of what I wanted to spend. And I don't feel like we went wildly over, but I do think my budgeting, like I said, was good in the beginning, like researching the average cost of things if I couldn't afford something that I wanted, like a pianist, I would rather have had extra friends there. And my brain was constantly totaling up like per person, what each person would kind of cost. And then I knew what musicians would cost. And so I was constantly, when people were RSVPing, just keeping a tally of like the budget and whether we had extra money to play with or not. Did you wish your wedding weekend was longer or was it just right? I mean, the amount of time we spent with people, perfect, just right, especially because we did our UK civil as well. However, I wish I'd we'd had a longer mini moon. However, we needed to be back for our friend's wedding in Scotland. They'd booked that in actually before we booked our own wedding. We checked that that was okay with them that we booked our wedding the week before by the way they were buzzing they were like this is the best couple of weeks of our life i was buzzing by the time i got to their wedding so i was just like this is the most fun ever and they were happy because they got some sun before their wedding so it just worked out really well but yeah we had to come back for theirs so i would have done a longer mini moon but not a longer wedding like i'm really glad we our welcome dinner was originally meant to be everyone and i'm so glad that we changed it to just like family i felt like we got the right amount with everyone and then everyone else got to spend the rest of their time on the island in the way that they wanted to and i love that i loved seeing on instagram like what everyone was doing and some people like fully went like out some people were like more chilled it was just it was so nice but i loved having like a beach day the next day and just like getting to see a few more 
people and have lunch together and like we went through all of the photos and that was just super nice wedding earrings oh they were from dior they were actually they were something borrowed i didn't do the whole something new borrow blue thing i'm taking it as my original engagement ring was good enough luck and it, it came to ibiza with me i don't think i had something blue that was the only thing i didn't have the sky was blue the sky was very blue but anyway my wedding earrings were the dior tri tribal tri tri true tribal tribal i love them they were my wedding earrings for actually both of the weddings i just felt like they were the, so simple so classic and just beautiful how is the post wedding calm down i honestly don't feel like i have it i am so happy to be back home a lot of my evening when i was like dancing with the girls i was just screaming at them like imagine what i can do with my mental capacity now i don't have to plan two weddings and it is phenomenal I'm so happy. My inbox is so much quieter because I don't get a wedding email every day. Yeah, I'm so happy and so chilled and just, I, I loved it, but I'm happy to be home. Did you write your own vows? No, we did not. This is very Susie of me, but I was like, as short and sweet as physically possible to both officiants. Long ceremonies, they're not for me. I feel like sometimes they, they go on a bit too long and I want to spend the day with my husband, not just standing there kind of staring at him, repeating after someone else. I also want to spend the day with my friends and my family. So I wanted it to be short and sweet, but I have to say the officiant that we had for Ibiza, he, I picked him because he's the most like Ibiza woo woo guy. Like he's much more like spiritual about the island and all of the other options look like accountants in my opinion. No offense to accountants or to those officiants, but they just weren't what I wanted for my wedding. And you know me, I'm a woo woo kind of gal. We didn't write our own vows. We were giving the option to, I was just like, mate, short and sweet as possible, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't realize that before I got to the venue, he'd actually spoken to Ryan, asked him like a lot of questions about our life together. The words that he was saying, we were crying. I feel like, cause we didn't write it. We had no expectation on what this man was about to say. He said a lot of things that were so relevant in a woo woo way weirdly so relevant to each of us and our journey together and I don't think that was from just what Ryan had said I'm convinced this man might be psychic it was stunning so yeah we didn't write our own vows but we I think we picked our officiant very very well do you feel different now you're married no but I felt different when I got engaged and I feel like that feeling has hit Ryan now that we're married but I've always been very much like a we are a team we are a partnership kind of vibes from very very early on especially because we we started renewing houses together and kind of pooling our money in that way like a very long time ago so i think that mindset wifey mindset kicked in for me a long time ago and that was why i was always saying to him you need to upgrade your package to wifey level because i'm currently operating at a level that you're not subscribed to there were actually quite a few questions on how many guests we had specifically which i was not expecting it's such a funny question it's so funny that it was so highly requested but for our civil we had 20 20 something 20 something for ceremony and food and then we invited like a much larger amount basically just like everyone we knew it was like come to the pub for the evening blah 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 50 to 60 maybe but people were like kind of were in and out they just like drop in drop by so it didn't feel like 60. i also don't know if ever did everyone turn up i'm not sure but yeah so we did it quite differently and we were very much like please don't rearrange your plans to come to this uk civil thing like really please don't like if you can't make it it's not the end of the world yeah we had some family for the uk civil like grandparents that i just knew wouldn't want to travel to ibiza also financially like some people wouldn't have wanted to have made the trip to ibiza so it, it did work out really nicely in terms of being able to include people that maybe wouldn't want to pay for a flight to ibiza and for ibiza we had 40 and it was literally just like immediate family and then like our best 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 friends like we really had our our front row people only at that wedding and then we had each of their partners that was something that i was very set on everyone got a plus one like there were people that i offered plus ones to i was like bring anyone bring your sister bring bring someone and they they didn't take me up on it which i was like okay but the, the offer was there i really wanted the day to be about love in like whatever capacity whether it was like bringing another best friend or bringing your partner i really wanted everyone especially if they were making their journey to have someone to travel with and bring to the wedding and just to have a lot of fun with so yeah 40 that was obviously everything so ceremony food evening you can do i think for our ibiza venue you can have just evening guests as well but it just didn't seem necessary to us i was like everyone's invited so okay let's talk engagement rings wedding bands i'll try and insert a photo of ryan's wedding band because he is obviously not here right now he's away playing a show so wifey's already left on her own 
alone no i fully volunteered to stay home so yeah i have been quite vocal over the last year about the fact that my engagement ring which was originally my mum's first engagement ring my mum has only been married the once she is still married she's had many 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 engagement rings and this was her first one that my dad proposed with my mum did not love this ring and very quickly swapped it out for something else which um we're just gonna carry on tradition it's kind of funny because this is like the big girl version of her next engagement ring and i didn't even intentionally do that but yeah i love i love this ring however what i didn't this is the thing because you don't wear your engagement ring before you get engaged so you don't get a chance to like test run a ring and this is very weighty on the top half it's a very thin band and it's very weighty on the top half so what it likes to do it doesn't matter how small i have this ring made it will go loppy. The only way it will not do that is if it's too tight and I don't want that. So I found that especially in the winter, the ring was just spinning around and around and around. It was so annoying. And yes, a wedding band would stop it, but because it isn't raised, you can't actually fit a wedding band underneath it, which is really annoying, especially for the kind of wedding bands that I liked. Now, what you can do is have one of the ones that goes in a v shape i personally don't like them i didn't like them it just when i added that or if i added something more flat like my friend kate has a really like flowery one that molds around her ring it's really beautiful it really suits her that kind of stuff way too girly for me for my taste i love more of a, like a vintage style ring less girly i like vintage vintage but with a maybe it's like more classic more clean lines i don't really know i don't know what it is but i don't like when there's too much going on but equally i don't like when there's nothing going on like a clean band oval for me they're stunning so many girls they suit really really well for me i think that would be too plain so i was getting annoyed with this ring it just didn't work with me for every day in the winter my knitwear was super catchy which is literally the first thing my mum said to me after I got engaged was enjoy wearing knitwear so when we went to choose our wedding bands I was very open-minded I was like I can go for a v or I can do x y and z I had another style like these bands like eternity bands that have like the oval diamonds that was my dream and I was like oh maybe it will fit nicely onto that it didn't and then I was like oh maybe we could have something made to fit around it and then I was like I don't even like this ring that much at this point like I don't get enjoyment out of wearing it because it catches on everything like it would catch on my hair it would catch on my clothes and it just got to the point where I was like I'm not enjoying this ring enough to have a band made especially for it and then if i wanted to not wear the ring i couldn't just wear the band because there would be a gap we looked at so many options i've seen all of the viral videos about special bands that are made and blah 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 and you can spin them around and what not for me you know how much i overthink things trust me when i say i explored every option this just works really nicely as a ring on its own it's a gorgeous ring and if i want to wear it if i if i'm having a day where i'm like oh i feel like wearing that engagement ring today i can i can still take this one off put the other one on but when we were trying on wedding bands i tried on this and i was originally thinking of just going for like a really thick wedding band like maybe something like a gold band that was like quite raised and then just had like a line of diamonds around the middle to like replace this that didn't happen but i tried on this ring and it's like a tree i don't even know what you would call this like you know some people just know everything about their rings i just tried it on and i freaking loved it and i just felt like it suited me and it suited my hand and i tried it on and ryan was sat next to me and even he went uh, we were both like yeah this looks like it was made to be on my finger it allows me to wear other jewelry and it doesn't feel like the other jewelry is clashing like it suits all of my jewelry preferences so well that was something that i wasn't finding with this like there was only certain types of jewelry that i could wear and in the summer i love to wear really fun like colorful rings and things like that and it just didn't work because the stone is so like this is such an old school princessy kind of ring it just didn't work for when i want to be in like tacky me mode this works whether i want to be classy girl or tacky girl and i love that i like get you a girl that can do everything so yeah that is my ring i haven't cleaned her today i clean her most days but there's like nine one big diamond and then like eight little diamonds on each one the center one's slightly bigger it's white gold on the little prongs and then the underneath it's i can't remember how many carats 18 carat nine carat nine carat whatever the one is that doesn't scratch because i didn't want something that like bends and scratches but yeah i'm obsessed I'm obsessed with her this under a spotlight oh my god i have a video of it in the sun the day i walked out of this the shop because i walked out wearing it she catches the light like nothing i've ever seen like way better than this like, I, I look at her and i'm like i can't believe you online so yeah this is my wedding band 
I'm just not wearing my engagement ring. That's kind of how I am looking at it. So those are all of my questions. That is going to be it for me today. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed having a nosy at the ring if that's what you were here for. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of the love on all of the wedding content. We just have the pro video to go whenever that appears and then we are fully done with the wedding era. What a ride. I've loved it. Anyway, thank you so much for all of the love. I hope you're all having the best day and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Love you, bye. Thank <music> you.